We often find with networks that we're comparing two different things which are kind of similar. So you might, for example, have um, a LAN versus WAN, so a local area network versus a wide area network. You might have a mesh topology for a network compared to a star topology. And here's another one. You've got the idea that you've got client server networks and peer to peer networks. So let's just cover those two um, and show the differences really between the two. So let's cover first off how you can identify the two. All right, so here on the left hand side, I'm going to do a, a client server network. And it is so easy to identify a client server network because you will have this this server. That is how you know you are dealing with a client server network. It has a server in it. If it has a server in it, it's a client server network. I'm going to say that sort of every time, uh, multiple times, uh, and in many different ways I can, because it should be so easy to identify these things. Look here, that is how you know you have a client server network because it has a server. You're more likely to have this maybe at your school. And really the idea is that you can log into this computer here you may save a file onto that computer, but what's actually happening is that the file's not being stored in the computer there. It's actually being, and this is, you don't know this is happening in the background, it's being sent to a server and it will store it there. And that means that if you log into a different computer one day, maybe in a different room, um, then you will still have access to all your files. So you can then retrieve that file if you wanted to open it and then edit it and save it and then it'll be sent back to the server. That is a client server net, uh, network. Your peer-to-peer -peer network is much more likely what going to be what you have at home, not guaranteed. You're going to have this idea that you might have a, well, you'll still have a central switch. You might have a PC connected to that in some sort of way. You might have another PC in your in your uh, house, and it's possible you can have two. Maybe that's a laptop or something like that. Um, and then you'll have maybe a, a, a phone which is connected wirelessly or something whatever, uh, something like that. But you know what you don't have you don't have a server, all right? I just want to make that sort of clear. You could easily, you could have a phone over here. You could have a phone, but it's still client server on the left-hand side because of this, this server here. But on the right-hand side, look, no server. There is no server, so it is peer-to-peer, -peer, all right? And let's just cover briefly uh, what a server does and what a server is, okay? So a server, and this is... Uh, this isn't the best uh, description, but it provides a service. I know it's sort of like using the, the word in a slightly different way. That service, it's one of these things where maybe a better server, by example, it could be, for example, a file server. So a file server will hold, like I showed you before, all the files um, that you own and then distributed them to the client that you will happen to be using at any given time. So anytime a computer accesses the server and uses it, that computer becomes a client. Or it could be an application server. An application server will control what programs are installed on a computer and do things like keep um, programs up to date um, and it lets you install things quite nice and easily, but we'll come to that in a moment. Okay, so if all your files are on this central server here, it means that backups can be done easily because one computer essentially needs to be backed up. This is faster because you're not going to different computers and it's also going to be more reliable because it's less likely you're going to like forget to accidentally back up one of them. Applications can be installed um, centrally and pushed out one, um, to all computers on the network. So if you've got the latest web browser um, to install, on all the computers. If you think about at home, you'd have to go from individual, uh, from your PC to your laptop and install it twice. But on a client server network, you can just push a button on the server and it will cause every client connected to it to be upgraded to the latest version. And kind of because you've got all your files and your applications in one place, it means that security can be controlled centrally as well. So I can force every computer um, to have the latest version of antivirus installed, for example. And that way I've got a bit more of a confidence that my computers can protect themselves against any sort of attack from malware. But there are some you know, significant disadvantages for client server networks. First off is the cost that are involved in them. So for example, I have to uh, spend money to buy this server and the server has to be a pretty, usually a pretty powerful PC if it's going to if it's going to serve any sort of significant size network so there's a cost to set up for that but there's also the cost that if you're dealing with again a school network or an office network that somebody's probably going to be paid to maintain this server so to stop it from collapsing and to stop your whole network to then fall uh, fall down shortly afterwards so there's definitely a cost issue here because you have to pay that person a salary 
You've also got the idea that should the worst happen and the server goes down, you've got a central point of failure. So if the server collapses, your whole network might collapse. Now, it depends kind of what server goes down. So you might have, for example, your file server go down. That means that nobody can access the files. That would be awful. But maybe if a print server went down, that wouldn't be too much of an issue. Just because it sort of means that nobody would be able to print their files. But certainly a server going down may break the network. OK, so when we're comparing and contrasting this to a peer to peer, really, it's just the opposite that we have to think about here. Um, so, for example, backups can't be done centrally, so they take longer to do. Um, and you are much more likely to sort of like miss a file because you have to worry about backing up several different devices on that network. And like I said, we really are dealing with opposites here. So your programs and files on each computer might be different. That can be an issue. So if you've got an essential um, program, I don't know, something like Microsoft Word installed on one computer, you won't necessarily have it installed on another. So you might not be able to work on that, that computer. Security can vary kind of massively uh, depending on device and how often that is updated. And that, you know, can be a big issue because often um, attacks really are just looking for the weakest device in the network and they'll exploit that. However, they are cheaper. You know, that is, <laughs> we talked about this. They are, uh, you don't have to employ somebody to look after any server um, and you don't have to actually buy the server itself. And likewise, you don't have uh, to worry about a server crashing. Okay, if an individual computer breaks, that computer can't be used, but you don't have to worry about that central point of failure, which could bring down the entire network. And there are your differences between client server and peer to peer. If you found that video useful, please hit the like button and hit subscribe to the channel. Keep learning and revising more computer science by clicking on the videos linked here.